I have to introduce you to my close friend for the last 20 years, Max Grind. He is the most talented, God blessed in every area of his life, family, and everything. Max Grind. Thank Hello. you for joining us. All the way from Kerrville, Texas. Good. Yes, sir. Thank you, Herman. It's an honor to be with you again. We've been can friends. You, can you give us a little geography? Where is Kerrville near? Now, that's a secret. Only the Jehovah Witnesses can find us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, um, we live out on a ranch south of Kerrville, Texas. Kerrville is up 60 miles north of San Antonio. Okay. So we're in the beautiful Texas Hill Country. Wow. Where lots of people come because of the wildlife, the whitewater rivers, the canoeing, and the uh, hills. Uh, they're not really mountains, but to us Texans, they look like it. I'm at 1,930 feet right now on a hill in my studio home uh, here in the Texas Hill Country. Can you can you can you show us uh, what you look at in the morning? Yeah, yes, sir. I, I, I'm gonna pick up the computer here, and so you can kind of see. But it's, we have an all-you-can-eat buffet here at the uh, at the house, and my wife loves animals as I do, and this is what shows up every morning for the free buffet. Look at this, well, look at this, right outside his sliding glass windows, look at this, and they're eating his buffet in the morning. His, I mean, I just, <laughs> the one, did you see the one jump over top of the other one? Unbelievable. Max, you are blessed. Yes, sir. Uh, I am. I admit that, and I thank God for it. And uh, and we just uh, have a lot you, of you, time. You, you've got to tell them the first time you and I met uh, was at uh, at a book yeah. bookseller convention in Atlanta. Yes, sir. In 1989. Uh, the tell them what time. happened. Okay. Well, I was there. We had uh, got it called me to do the divine servant sculpture, Jesus washing Peter's feet. I had made- Can, can we show that right yeah. here? Can we show this right, yeah, the, and, right and over here? That right small right. sculpture. Can we show that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we go. There, and, there, uh, I there's, had to, the, there's the sculpture that you gave me on my birthday. Yes, sir. Back when you were young. Back when I was young, yeah. I, yeah, I, back I, in 1989. And yeah. you saw that sculpture and I was a stranger and God touched you and your heart looking at it, and then you just started going on and on about that composition being from the Lord, and then you said, this needs to be made life-size, and um, I had never dared to dream life-size because as a young artist, uh, big sculptures are very expensive. Small sculptures are very expensive in bronze, uh, but you said, let's pray for it, Herman, and so you prayed with me, and you laid hands with me on me, and, uh, and you basically said, God, let this young artist make the sculpture Divine Servant life-size. And, and, and you prayed that prayer boldly in faith. And again, I'm, I was coming out of Baptist roots, 40 years of Southern Baptist. At that same convention, we got the baptism of the Holy Spirit from another stranger that, that prayed for us named Bill Banks out of Missouri. But at that convention, God gave us the baptism, and then he used you to launch my career into the big monumental sculptures and divine servant was my first. And it was because of your words and prayers, Herman, and I share and I'll be forever grateful to you uh, for the speaking that into existence. And I'll have to, I'll have, I'll have to tell you how I felt. I, as you know, the, the booksellers convention had a lot of people and they had aisles and you yeah. were in this one area and, yeah. and you had the divine servant. And I remember going past, I looked at it, and something, I mean, I can, I, I can recall the feeling. I passed it, and I came back, and I just stood there, and I think you were watching me. Yeah, right. No, and and, and, and I, I mean, I was, I was not talking or anything. I was just standing. I was like I was mesmerized by the sculpture. It was just, it was like perfect in every detail, and I'm standing there. And you and I then started talking, right. but but I was I was literally pulled back from passing it. Praise back God! To the, that was that was to the, the Holy table. Spirit. 
That was yeah. the Holy Spirit tractor beam. You'd miss the mark, and he brought you right back in. <laughs> and I, yeah. I was praying, God, get that back there. That's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so the no. work you launched, Herman, has gone on now around the world. These, that sculpture now, the small ones in the life size are all over. People like Billy Graham has it, but Mike Huckabee, uh, Senator Ted Cruz. Did Billy take it to heaven with him? I don't think he goes to heaven, but you'll have the real thing. So we don't need to have the, the thing that points because we'll have the one we point to. But but thank you, Herman, for that prayer that really changed our whole life. And it, and it drew us into a ministry where at the time I had been doing wildlife and was an, uh, you know, an, and was an artist. After that convention, I became an evangelist after that, that prayer for the baptism. And then you, you, you kind of, you kind of went crazy. I did. Yeah, and you've, you, you haven't got over it. No, I haven't. I haven't. So, but, uh, but that's okay, because I'm not turning back. We're going forward, and uh, some people love us. Some people think we got off the reservation and jumped the track, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but it's all in the book, Jesus' book, the Bible, you know. So this, we try. This, is your, this is your latest book. It is absolute. Uh, i got to tell you, Max, once you start looking through this, you better put everything else aside because you're not going to put it down. I'm telling you. And, and, and the fact that I know you like a brother and to see these uh, amazing, I mean, they, not only are they life size, like the lion, for example, that's bigger than life size. Yes, sir. Well, that, that book is actually our first book, Herman. I've done a lot of writing of articles and, and things and stuff, but I've never done a book before, and I'm in a number of books. But this is the 14-year documented history of the Coming King Sculpture Prayer Garden in Kerrville, Texas. Now, what is the garden? What is the garden all about? Well, um, the, to tell you what it is, it's a, uh, a, a place on the side of an interstate highway, I-10, Interstate 10, um, halfway between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans on I-10 at the same latitude as Israel. And people come into this garden property, which is 24.5 acres, and there is, they go to the top of the hill, and at the top of the hill is a cross-shaped garden that's 300 feet long, and it's in the shape of a cross, and my big monumental sculptures are in the points of the cross, and then there's a giant hollow empty cross at the end that's 77 foot, seven inches long, and is that God uses the art, the monumental art, to draw tourists and curious people off the interstate highway. As soon as they walk in this cross-shaped garden, there's 77 Bible verses in three languages, and they're, they're basically the essence of the gospel from the Old to the New Testament. And people read these 77 verses in their language, and it starts with the assumption that the people don't even have any idea about God or the Bible. So it makes the case first that there's a God. Max, how did you get how did you get the money to do this? <laughs> well, uh, this is this is this is an amazing story, and we got it on our website. It's all in this new book that we've got. I documented everything because we started keeping prayer journals um, since 1989. That convention, because God started doing so much stuff, I started writing it down, and I now have about 300 pounds of prayer journals. But anyways, um, the way we got the money and the way we got the land first, a man. Um, uh, the way it was, we were in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, in, in December 9, 2001, sitting in an audience listening to an evangelist uh, named Dr. Mahesh Chavda from the uh, uh, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. And we had heard amazing miracles that happened with him. And so I even brought a, a video camera to just film him from my seat in the church. And, in the, and we met him on the way in, and Sherry and I, my wife, and uh, the pastor, Bill Hart, introduced us. Um, and then we sat down on the chair like 300 other people. And in the middle of his sermon, he stopped, he started looking around and he said, where's that artist that I met? And, um, and, and he, I waved my hand. He said, stand up. And then he spoke this prophecy, Herman. And uh, he said, and, and it's on the internet and it's on all our stuff and it's in the book for word for word. But basically he said, God's going to, has raised you up and you will be helping restore the tabernacle of David and all the art you've made in your life, God will now use to bring souls to him. And I'm going to send a lot of people to help you, but you will be involved in the restoration of the tabernacle. And, and I turned them, I mean, everybody clapped in the charismatic church. Again, we were Baptists, so that, 
that kind of seemed wild. And I whispered to my wife, even I, I think I said, uh, that guy's nuttier than a squirrel. God's not <laughs> God's not going to redo the tabernacle. That's been done. And uh, But anyways, I got it recorded. You can see it. And But he spoke it out. And, and we didn't believe it. You know, the Bible says don't despise prophecy. But then eight months later, we get a um, an email from another stranger named Marlon Quibodeau in Beaumont, Texas, a businessman who was also an evangelist. And he said God told him that I was supposed to build a 77-foot, 7-inch cross on Interstate 10. And, uh, and I said, well, uh, you don't need an artist, a sculptor. Uh, and yes, I'm an architect, but you can just go to an engineer and build a cross. You don't need a, a sculptor. And he said, no, God said, you are the one to do it. And I said, look, let me pray about it. I got a lot of things I'm trying to do and I'm supposed to do. Let me pray about it. And I was thinking, let me pray and call him back and say, I'm not interested. Can't do it. And then, I, and then I said, do you have any money? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> I said, because this is real expensive. You build anything 77 foot tall that's permanent, and it's going to be in the millions of dollars. And uh, he said, no, but I'm believing this is God, and I'll, I will find the money. I said, okay, let me pray. And, and to my shock, Herman, I prayed, uh, and I got a vision. And I got a vision of a cross-shaped garden on the side of a highway with a John Hollow empty cross that I'd never seen done before in sculpture. I saw my sculptures and the points of the cross that had taken me a lifetime to make. And then I saw the scriptures on the ground where people could read the Bible verses going into this cross. And then the scene changed and I saw cars backed up on the interstate highway and on the feeder street. So many people trying to get to the cross, they couldn't get in. And that just happened. That scene just happened on, um, October the 4th, when we had that evangelist, Sean Foyt, come up here and do a concert. And we had, they estimate 6,000 people. The cars were parked, Interstate Highway I-10 had got backed up. We had so many people, and I've got these pictures, and it's just astounding. So anyways, that's how the vision I got. But we didn't have any money. You know how you got it. You got a vision. You have no money. You have no land. Uh, but your God's told you to do something. And so we, it wouldn't go away. I mean, my wife said, this is God. I shared it with my prayer intercessors. And they said, that's how you know it's the Lord. Yeah. And so anyways, we didn't know where the land was. I'd drive up and down the highway. And I knew it was on I-10 somewhere, but I didn't know where. And, uh, and one day as I was sitting at a stoplight in Kerrville and the Holy Spirit whispered in my ear and said, look up, I'm going to give you that land right there. And there was a perfect piece of land right at the main entrance of Kerrville, an hour from San Antonio, and it was vacant land. So to make a long story short, um, the man that owned it um, had bought it for purely for investment like way many, many, 20 years before, and uh, and he never put a for sale sign on it, even though he wanted to um, make money with it. But God would never let him put a for sale sign or list it on the market. So I called the guy up on the phone, and he had a phone recorder, and, and I said, look, this is Max Griner. I'm an artist, and, and I want to bring millions of people to Jesus, and would you we'd like to have your land for this garden for Jesus. Would you give it to us? And, uh, and I just asked him to get land on that I-10 at the main entrance is, is worth millions of dollars all up and down there. And anyways, he didn't return my call. So I sent him a letter. I got the letter in writing. He didn't then return the deal. And then one time the, then I was at one of these conventions, and my wife called and said, that guy's out here at the house. And I said, I'll be back soon. Anyway, his name was Clifford Ray. He knew everything I was saying. He was a Christian. He was an art collector, and I turned out he was my art collector and bought the Divine Servant sculpture for his wife for Christmas years before, and I had never met him. He bought it mail order. So he knew entirely what I was doing. So anyway, we prayed together, and I prayed, and he said, okay, we'll pray with my wife. Uh, we'd like to give you this land. Well, anyways, that's worth millions of dollars in Kerrville. But what happened is we drew up the contracts. He was going to do it for this, for Jesus. And then his older, his sons, grown sons, found out that their daddy was giving away their inheritance. So he said, they said, no, daddy, don't give away our inheritance. That's, you know, sell it. And so he put a price of 500000 on that, Herman. And, and that was a great price for, for the property. But when you don't have 500000 it's a lot. And uh, so anyway, Sherry and I tried to raise money. We had formed a 501c3 called the Coming King Foundation. Uh, and we gave all we could. And, and, and the biggest gift in our life at that time was, $200,000 that we gave, but it was sharp. God would not let us do this by mm -hmm. ourselves. It wasn't the Griner Garden. It was the Jesus Garden. Yes. Um, uh, we went out to that land. Now this answers your question about the money. 
uh, on the day before or on a week before the contract was to expire on the land, um, we went out and we put a little cross in the ground and I've got it right here. And you can kind of see um, yeah. a little cedar cross made from the cedar wood on the property. And we, we, we put it in the ground. We asked God for a million souls and for the money for the $500,000 that they had asked, the sons had asked for this piece of land. We put it in the ground instant and we anointed it with oil and water from Israel. We prayed, there's about 22 of us. And then suddenly when it hit the ground, a scorpion charged it, big two inch scorpion uh, or three inch, charged the cross. And my wife crushed it under her foot and, and we all, you know, being Christians, we realize that scorpions and snakes are pictures of the demonic kingdom attacking the cross. At that moment, the sky filled with hawks, wild northern harrier hawks. We actually have the video on our website. And it wasn't buzzards. In Texas, we got a lot of buzzards. But it was hawks. Well, we all prayed. We saw power encounter. There's God, his angels wanting to do this on this land. There's the devil and his demons trying to stop it. Uh, we had that experience. We didn't understand it, but we knew it was a, a power encounters, old John Weber used to say. So anyways, um, I didn't know, and none of us knew, but one of the men that had come that day to pray was, a, he now lets us say his name. His name is Herschel Reed, and he is one of the heirs of Hallmark Cards. Wow. And Herschel Reed pri silently prayed, as because he'd already told me he wouldn't give us a dime. He's a strong Christian, but he didn't do nothing unless God tells him. So he put out a fleece, which I learned later was his first fleece. He said, God, if you want me to give the Coming King Foundation $500,000 to build this garden for Jesus, when I open my eyes from praying, I want to see a hawk floating over my head. When he opened his eyes, Herman, there were about a dozen hawks hovering over his head. And the next morning he gave me $500,000 to buy the land for that garden. Wow. Isn't that a good story? That that is that's that that is God, isn't it? Yes, sir, it is. You remember the disciples and the and they've got their tax money out of the fish. You remember that when Jesus said, I'll go throw your line? The disciples had to give their money to the IRS. You know, we got to we got to build a garden for Jesus with the money that he gave us. And so that launched the way and, and thousands of people have been involved. And now this garden is going, and, and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, uh, more than 100,000 a year come to this garden on I-10. Wow. And, and, and people are getting saved, Herman. And people get saved? Get thousands. They get, we've had thousands get born again, because inside that cross, after you read the 77 verses, there's four plaques inside the cross. It's salvation, then it's empowerment, baptism, the Holy Spirit, healing, and then miracles, signs, and wonders. And people go into that cross and they get transformed. They get saved. They get baptized in the Holy Spirit. They get healed. They get delivered. Here this last month, we got an incredible two-page letter from a 50-year-old homosexual man that said he had had 150 partners or more. He went into that cross and God completely changed him. Wow. We've had 30 documented uh, suicides canceled up there. I mean, it, it, people have got healed. I mean, the coolest thing about these gardens is you don't need me or you or an evangelist or a preacher. We put the word out there. We drew them in with the art, and then the prayers are there, and it's like a self-service walk-in to track, and that's how people are, are you know, meeting God, and, uh, and it's Max, Max, I love, I love the backdrop. You, you, designed, <laughs> you, you designed that fireplace. But yes, maybe some, maybe sometime, well, that is gorgeous. Maybe sometime we could do a Zoom from that cross. That would be wonderful, Herman. Yeah, no, that, that would be wonderful. A, 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 actually, as the people are coming and going? Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Well, I mean, when, when this all stuff started happening and the cross went up after we had been sued and all that stuff, Associated Press and TV stations came out there to cover the story. And, and while the reporter from CBS News was interviewing me and holding the microphone, Herman, and talking about why is everybody so mad at this cross and all that stuff, and I said, you know, well, people are coming up here to meet Jesus, and he's here, and he's putting the glory on him. He said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, it looks like glitter. And I, and I looked at the, the reporter, and 
and holding the microphone, and God instantly covered his hand and the microphone with this glory glitter dust, this Jesus dust. And I said, well, it's on you right there. And so they turned the cameras on the reporter. <laughs> and so uh, literally was covering and manifesting his you actually, You actually had that dust analyzed, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, what, this was in 19, uh, March 7th, 1999, that we uh, first experienced it. And it came into our house in our, our little prayer closet bathroom that was new at the time. And, and uh, but, but I, I knew it was supernatural because it was appearing on my wife, my daughter, um, our pets on all around the house, our clothing. As we tell people about Jesus, it was while we were telling people about Jesus. And, but anyways, I didn't know, uh, and I'm, I'm a, I am have a degree in architecture from Texas A&M, and, and I didn't know if it was gold or silver or platinum or something else. And I wanted to know. So I'm the first person that ever scientifically tested it with a major laboratory. So I took it to Texas A&M University, sent it there, didn't tell them what it was. This was back before the real internet was going in 99, where they really couldn't search me first. And because I'm a Texas Aggie and have that degree in architecture, um, they did the $5,000 test for free. And the president of the college called up and was freaked out, Herman. He said, where are you getting that stuff? And I said, well, what is it? He says, we have no idea. It's, we've never seen it before. It's, it's not on the element chart. And I said, what? You mean it's not on the chart that the, you learn in physics and in science? He said, no, it's not there. It's a created substance. How are you getting that? And so he sent me electron microscope pictures, Herman, they're on the website and you can see them. And, and it just freaked the scientists because they, they were teaching in the College of Geophysics and Geology. They don't believe in God. They teach there's no God. And I told the president, I said, it shows up when I tell people Jesus Christ is Lord. And he got real quiet on the end of the phone. And he said, that's incredible. I can't talk to you anymore <laughs> to get off the phone. <laughs> I'll lose my job. Oh, that's right. And I said, look, send your scientists, send your machines, send anything you want. Come to my house and see this stuff because it goes up and down the walls of our prayer closet. And, and he said, no, no, I, I can't talk to you. We can't combine science and religion. And I said, sir, I really sincerely appreciate you testing this, but I'm not trying to combine science and religion. I'm just telling you I found an unusual particle, and I wanted you to analyze it scientifically and tell me what it is. And he said, you know, we cannot have anything to do with God. And so I, he said, I said, well, thank you, sir. And he hung up. Holy Spirit put conviction on me. And right that moment, I said, he said, write that doctor, Tex A&M, and thank him for the, doing that test. And then tell him no job is worth going to hell over. <laughs> and so no job is worth going to hell over. So I wrote that letter and uh, and and I and I sent it to him. Never heard back. And I kind of disappeared from the, from the world. I don't know where they put that file, but it's in, you know it's hidden somewhere. Uh, but the miracle has continued to this day. It still happens. Now, like I said, yeah. This, this sculpture right here. This is one of my favorite. You're right. The coming king. Yes. Christ on the White Horse from Revelation 1911. How did you get that well, in your mind? Well, that's... I mean, you, actually, the, you actually used an Arabian horse. Yes. Yeah, because that's the oldest breed, and there's actually uh, a breed that precedes that that didn't even really have a name, but it, it evolved into the, the, uh, uh, the Arabian, they said. So I did use it, but the way that that idea came... And I learned, Herman, that I could ask God for his ideas after the divine servant. And so that kind of spoiled me. So I just decided I want to do what he wants me to do, not just come up with ideas as a creative artist with a brain that's, you know, creative. And so uh, I was showing uh, an evangelist here when we were building this house, Dick Schumann, um, the house, and we were upstairs where the walls were still open with studs. He looked down into my sculpting area, and he, and future sculpting area, and he said, what's next, the coming king? And when he said that, chills just went over my body, and I, I couldn't always even speak. I didn't, and finally, we went outside to our patio, and I said, I got to tell you, Richard, what just happened. But when you said that, I saw a vision of an 18-foot-tall sculpture of Christ on a horse with a sword and a shofar on a cloud. And he got all excited because he was, had been a, uh, I believe it was a, a the Church of the Nazarene <laughs> evangelist, that, or no, yeah. it was a Christ, I think. And, uh, and so we prayed and asked God to bring that one forward. And sure enough, God did, and it was Paul Crouch at TBN that walked by my booth at one of those shows. And I showed, had the small little sculpture there and God drew him in like he drew you. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
me, and he said, that needs to be life-size. And I says, I'm praying that, you know, because Herman Bailey prayed with me for the life-size, you know, divine servant. So I got faith now. I'm going to pray like Herman. And then, you know, Paul got the first one that we made, and that made it possible. And now we've got those around the we've got, we've got about three minutes left. Give the plan of salvation. Okay. Well, you know, what we learned at seven years old, I learned um, that, that God – would take me on as a little child. And in the Baptist church, we're real good about presenting the gospel, especially at Bible school. But, um, but he's real folks. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be this excited. I don't sell stuff that I don't believe in, <laughs> but I'll promote and I'll sell anything that I believe in. And well, I believe in Jesus Christ and all these stories we've told you is true. You can go to our website, you can read the book and you can see uh, the amazing God that we have. And he wants to, live in you. He wants to do with you what he's done with me, what he's done with Herman and Sharon and the folks at, at wonderful folks at uh, Christian Television Network. And so I just ask you, uh, do you want God in your life? I mean, how's it working out without him? And then too good, is it? Okay, so if you want God, you want Jesus to come into your life, then just pray this prayer with me right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I need you. I need you in my life right now. It hadn't been going so good, me being in control of my life. So I want to turn my control over to you, Jesus. I thank you for dying on the cross for me 2,000 years ago and then being resurrected. And now you say in your word, the Bible, that anyone that will trust in you and believe what you say and receive you, you will receive them and in no way turn them away, no matter what they've done. So God, I accept that uh, that free invitation that you paid for. And I ask you to make me a new creation, uh, make me your, your son or your daughter in Christ. And I just ask that you fill me with your Holy spirit. And Lord, mm -hmm. I, I ask you also that, that you uh, baptize me with fire and power and the nine gifts that the apostle Paul talks about. And, and so I ask for salvation, but I also ask for the empowerment that'll make me the creation I need to be to do what you called me to be. And so I just thank you, God, for saving me and filling me with the Holy Spirit and baptizing me with fire and power and, and take control of my life and let me walk in the destiny that you have for me. I Amen. thank you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to tell, tell everybody, go to the website. This magazine will give you an idea of all of the products and the sculptures and everything this exceptional artist i mean he is he really is i mean not only is he a friend but i mean he is the best i've never seen anybody even come close to his work and i've seen a lot of stuff at my age trust me so and and get get this book it will absolutely fascinate you but let me tell you something this is the best book you could ever read amen the word of god have amen. a good day bye-bye and thank you so much herman Sharon. love you man love you too